All right, hey guys, what's going on? Today we're going to talk about the benchmark workout, Grace. Now, the first thing that we wanna talk about with Grace, guys, is the intention of the workout. Now, this is a short, fast, hard sprint workout, okay? And what we really want out of that means intensity. And that is the name of the game with Grace. It is arguably the shortest of all of the classic CrossFit benchmark workouts, okay? So our goal for this, what we're gonna say is we want you guys to be under four minutes, okay? Now, if it's your first time doing it and we're feeling it out a little bit, that mark maybe might go up to five or six minutes, but in an ideal world, we are gonna choose a weight that allows us to move at at least six reps per minute or more, okay? Now, we're gonna talk a lot about the tips and tricks inside of Grace today to help you guys improve your time, get better and everything like that. But the big thing for us today is going to be talking about charity because Grace Guys is a workout that we often choose in October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so all of our proceeds that we do here at Friendship and a lot of the stuff that we do around this workout is always going to be for the proceeds of breast cancer, breast cancer awareness, breast cancer survivors, whatever charity that we are choosing to. This year, we're choosing to support Pink Ribbon Girls. We'll put the link down in the description. If you guys wanna join in and donate, please do so. Our self-proclaimed face of friendship, Andy Era here is going to be doing some great things for charity this upcoming weekend. I hope to see you guys there wearing your pink, maybe wearing your costumes for Halloween and uh, enjoying yourselves, okay? So let's get into some of the tips and tricks so you guys can maximize. All right, now we're gonna talk about strategy first and foremost because some of the tips and tricks that Jenny are gonna talk about inside of the movement component itself is going to be determined based off of what strategy you choose. Now, the first strategy and the one that I like, if this is gonna be your guys' first time doing grace, if we pick the right weight, I think this is a really cool way to go about the workout, and that's gonna to be to go touch and go as long as you can, and usually it's gonna be either your grip or your shoulders start to fatigue out, then you're gonna drop it, take a quick five to 10 second break, and then you're gonna get on what I like to call the single train until you get to your 30 reps. So we're gonna watch Andy here. He's gonna go through some touch and go reps. And let's just do like five for me, and we'll imagine you're in the 20s. So like this is 21, 22. Let's say he's starting to get pretty tired here. He feels 23, likes to see that lockout a little better overhead, 24. And on 25, he's getting real tired, so he's gonna drop it here. Woo, all right, quick shake out, okay? He's gonna step back up, and then we're gonna get right into singles for his last five reps here. So he goes up overhead, drop. Good, and I like that, follow it back down. That's what we're gonna wanna see on those singles. Follow the bar back down, keep it settled, and go right into it, and let's say that that's 30. Very nice, okay? And then he's gonna collapse, and we're gonna clap it up for Andy, because that was really good, okay? So that's a really cool strategy. Go unbroken as long as you feel like you are inside a good form and you have good comfortability inside of the movement. So let's say a lot of people are gonna get somewhere in that mid-teen range, so like 13 to 17 or so, and then we would drop it, and we're gonna have something like 12 to 13 singles, maybe 15 singles, and you just wanna get on that monotonous rhythm of kind of dropping overhead. But when we drop overhead, we save the shoulders a little bit, and we also save a lot of the grip, which is a huge component of this workout, okay? The second choice would be to choose a set range. I'm gonna give you guys two options. The first one is going to be five sets of six, okay? And we're gonna do our five sets of six touch and go for at least the first few rounds of that, okay? But we're gonna think about getting those six done inside of about 40 to 45 seconds. And then at the 45 second mark, we're gonna pick it up and do our second six. And then at the 130 mark, we're gonna pick it up and do our third six. And that's a really good way to break this workout up. It's kind of like an EMOM style, but a really cool way to get this workout done in under four minutes, okay? Go ahead. Show me six. Now, if you guys are watching the clock here, let's say you guys are watching on YouTube or Facebook, let's see how long it takes him to do six reps here, okay? So this is three, and when we do touch and go, you're gonna find that this is maybe gonna take him like 12, maybe 15 seconds. When he does his last one, he can set it down. Now he's basically got 30 seconds of rest, okay, until we get to that 45 second mark. That's a really cool way to break this workout up. Another way that you guys could do this is do like a 12, 10, 8. If you guys are maybe a little bit stronger, Grace, and you guys are better at clean and jerks, you can do a 12, 10, 8. But that would be the second strategy is to break it up into sets and reps already before you even go into the workout and time those out. What time do I want to start my next set? And then you can plan out the whole workout from there. And then our last one is the always solid 30 singles, okay? Now Andy's gonna show us a couple singles here and we're gonna really watch how he paths the bar back down. Goes up overhead, hits a lockout. Drops it close to him and he follows it down with his hands so that bar doesn't get away from him, okay? We show me some, we're like, you're real fatigued. And he, yeah, we drop it from overhead. Follow him here, Mitchell. Oh, now we gotta bring it back into our spot, okay? 
if he gets to that point where he's real sloppy overhead, where he's like up overhead and he's kind of like weeble wobbly and standing and he throws it and it bounces really far away, that's gonna be a really bad strategy for you. So you wanna make sure when we drop it, we're almost pathing it and holding it down with our hands as we drop it down from there, okay? So those are the three main strategies for grace. If you guys have a coach, I highly recommend asking them which one they think is gonna be appropriate for you. All right, now we're gonna move on to the actual movements, the tips and tricks inside of this that really make a huge difference in this workout. Thanks guys. All right guys, so we are gonna go over the technique for the clean and jerk that we wanna to use to be the most efficient. Anytime we move efficiently from the very start, we have a better chance of moving faster and being able to maintain good form, good efficient form longer. And efficient form will always be faster than poor form. So the first thing we're gonna talk about, a common place that people fail grace or gets really fatigued is grip. So it's important from the very start we use our hook grip. Okay, so hook grip just means that we are wrapping our thumb underneath our fingers before we pick it up. Most people, as they get into the clean, will release that hook grip before we go overhead. Good. So you can see that he released overhead or when he caught. If you have really good mobility, you could probably hold that, but holding a tight hook grip can make your forearms blow up a little bit too. So if you can be a little relaxed, that's helpful. And Andy does a great job of regripping. Not everyone will do a great job of regripping that easily. So tip number one, work on your hook grip. Tip number two, start with push jerks. So for a lot of people, if you're trying to do grace and you've done it multiple times and you're trying to PR, maybe the RX weight or whatever weight you're starting with. So if I were gonna choose to scale down to 65 pounds because I wanted to get it in under three, four minutes, it might feel light in the beginning. So it might feel like, ooh, I wanna be fast. I'm gonna push press but that's not very efficient, so my shoulders are gonna fatigue a lot faster if I do that. So rep number one should be a good, solid push jerk. Even though Andy doesn't need to push jerk this weight, he's going to because when he gets to rep 28 and 29, he doesn't wanna fail overhead. Okay, so show a really good emphasis on that push jerk. Excellent. Even that, with that real, like that pause emphasis, is gonna be better because he's getting under the bar a little bit better and he's probably gonna make sure he really stood up before he put it down. So he's also not gonna get any no reps because no one wants a no rep in a 30 rep workout. Tip number three, Andy's done a good job of the whole time, but we wanna go overhead right from receiving the clean, right? So we bring it right to our shoulders and we're ready to go right up overhead. We shouldn't have to reset, especially in those first few reps. Okay, so let's make sure we show that he's ready to go as soon as he catches. Excellent. So sometimes people talk about or they choose to go a little heavier. They want to try a heavy grace. That's a fun one for people sometimes. You still really want it to be a weight that you could do that. If you're going to pick a weight that you're going to have to stand up and re-dip to jerk every time, that might be a little heavy to choose to test the workout grace with that. So it should be a weight that you feel comfortable going right overhead. Tip number four is how you're gonna bring the bar down. So we have a few different options and Andy is gonna demo each of them. We'll do the one that he was doing first. So he's overhead, he goes straight to the ground, but it's important when you're doing that to bring the bar nice and close to go down, you don't wanna let it come away from you and pull you forward. It's not gonna be great for your back. It's not gonna be great for speed or good technique with the clean and jerk. So right to the shoulders, right overhead, nice and close to his body, down to the ground. Nice, okay. The next option would be we come down, we have a little pause before we go down here, okay. So this might help him get his hook grip a little better. It might keep him in better position if he's not comfortable going to the ground yet. <clears throat> Good, to the hip, reset. Good. It's not long. He's not standing there forever, but it's helping him with a better lower to the ground. The next option might be for someone who's not real comfortable bringing it all the way down. So we can bring it to our shoulders, hip, Go. And it'll be quick, but you'll see it kind of stop in each position. Don't forget your push jerk. Good. And that probably 
was a little work for Andy because Andy's comfortable going straight to the ground. So anytime you're gonna alter what feels a little more natural for you, that can be difficult. But if you're someone who hasn't done a lot of touch and go reps, that might be your best option to start to make sure you're staying in good form. And I don't wanna leave out, this isn't necessarily technique, but we talked about grip and shoulders going. We don't want our back to blow up either. Andy's done a great job this whole time showing a good setup with his ribs down and dropping his butt down. A lot of times people start to get a little fatigued. Could you show a couple rounded reps? Not a lot, I don't want you to do a bunch of bad reps, but where your booty's a little high. And now he's getting tired and he's just gonna like go to the ground. Good, and even that's not atrociously ugly, but see how high his buns are? And now his back has a better chance of blowing up. So one, it's not gonna be as efficient. Two, no one wants to feel terrible after they test a workout. So think a little bit about your technique, keep this nice and tight, Drop your butt down so you're using your legs with your clean and jerk. And I hope all of these tips help. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you guys do better in grace this time, please leave a comment below and subscribe to our channel and check out some of our other benchmark videos. We'd love to hear about if our videos have helped you succeed in your PRs. Also, we'd love, we talked about breast cancer charities and what we're supporting this year. But if you have a favorite breast cancer charity, we'd love for you to drop that in the comments as well. Thanks guys.